Hi everyone, this is Anita from Department of Biochemistry, St. Joseph's College of Arts and Science, Autonomous Karlur. So today, in this video, we are going to see about the topic, Precipitation Reaction from the Subject Immunology. So what is precipitation? So precipitation is a antigen antibody reaction. It refers to an antigen antibody reaction between a soluble antigen and its antibody resulting in the formation of a soluble precipitin. The antibody causing precipitation is called as precipitin. So when you speak about mechanism of precipitation, precipitation is due to the formation of antigen antibody complex. The antigen is multivalent and the antibody is bivalent molecule. So it can bridge between two multivalent antigen molecule. This bridging leads to the formation of a lattice which forms the precipitate. When antigen and antibody are in optimal concentration, the precipitation is complete and large lattice is formed. So this is a slide which shows the precipitation reaction. So A represents antibody and B represents antigen. So when it clumps with each other, it forms a precipitation reaction. So precipitation reaction can be takes place in fluid and in case of and also in case of gel. So first one is precipitation reaction in fluid. So precipitation reaction can be carried out by a classical experiment. A set of five or more reaction tubes are arranged serially and are marked as A, B, C, D and E. A constant volume of antiserum is added to the each tube. Then the antigen is added in an increasing volume from tube A to E. The antigen antibody react together resulting in the precipitation. From this amount of precipitate form is determined by the proportion of an antigen and antibody. Maximum amount of precipitate is formed when antigen and antibody are in optimal proportion. Precipitation reaction in a solution. That is, here we have taken five test tubes which is serially named. Then, in the first step, we have added, we have had equal amount of antiserum, and in the second step, we have added increasing concentration of an antigen. So, from this, precipitation is formed. So, the precipitation will be higher where there is an equal amount of antiserum and then antigen. So this is a curve which shows the center tube of a reaction which contains the equal amount of antigen and antibody. So from this it shows the center tube contain equal amount of antigen and antibody and which leads to the lattice formation. So when the antibody is in excess or the antigen is in excess, the amount of precipitate formed will be less. So this occurs in the side tubes. The amount of precipitate formed in different tube is plotted on a graph paper, a curve is obtained. So this curve is called as precipitating curve. The curve shows a peak where the maximum precipitate is formed. So this occurs when the proportion of an antigen and antibody is in optimum. The amount of precipitate formed on the side tube is low, hence a curve descent on the sides. So from this what we have concluded is the center tube is uh, center tube contains equal amount of antigen and antibody, so where the precipitation is higher. So second reaction is precipitation reaction in a gel. So immune response can precipitate can form not only in solution but also in agar matrix. When the antigen and antibody diffuse towards one another in agar or when the antibody is incorporated into the agar and antigen diffuse into the antibody containing the matrix, a visible line of precipitation will be formed. So this immunodiffusion reaction can be used to determine relative concentration of an antigen or antibody. And also we can compare the antigen or to determine the relative purity of an antigen preparation. There are two immunodeficient techniques in case of precipitation reaction in gel. One is said to be radial immunodeficient, 
which is otherwise called as Mancini method and second one is double immunodiffusion which is otherwise called as Auschelani method and both are carried out in a semi-solid medium that is agar. So first one is radial immunodiffusion method so which is otherwise called as Mancini method. The relative concentration of an antigen can be determined by a simple quantitative assay in which an antigen sample is placed in a well and allowed to diffuse into the agar containing a suitable dilution of an antiserum. So, as the antigen diffuses into the agar, the region of equivalence is established and a ring of precipitation, a precipitating ring will be formed around the well. A area of precipitant ring is proportional to the concentration of the antigen. So, by comparing the area of the precipitant ring which stand it's with the standard curve, the concentration of an antigen sample can be determined. So, this is a slide that will show the image of an radial amino diffusion. So, second method is said to be double amino diffusion that is which is otherwise called as Auschelani method. So, this is a simple technique and it is effective qualitative tool for determining the relationship between the antigen and the number of different antigen antibody system present. In case of Auschelani gel diffusion method uh, in an agar matrix in one side which will be uh, coated with an antibody and in another side is coated with an antigen. So both antigen and antibody diffused radially from wells toward each other thereby establishing a concentration radium. As equivalences reach, a visible line of precipitation, a precipitating line is formed. So from this, we can determine the concentration of an antigen, antibody. So this is the main importance of Auster-Lani gel diffusion method. Thank you.